So good afternoon, everyone. Could you please take your seat? And we are going to begin. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the closing session of the first ever Africa e-commerce week. Following more than 60 sessions covering a wealth of policy issues, I'm pleased to note that we have seen extremely intense and interactive discussions across all stakeholder groups during the whole week. It's my impression that most participants have found the week to be a useful way of stimulating discussion on how African economies can be empowered to do well in the digital economy. So without much ado, I would like to show a brief video from the week, which will summarize what we have been doing here. And let me thank the, our comms team, Angtad's communication team, who have produced the video and who have made sure that the Africa e-commerce week has often being trending on social media this week. So, please go ahead. The fastest growing international conference that we host as an organization is the e-commerce week that we host in the spring every year. This forum is a major milestone event for Angtad and for Kenya. Since it's the first time that the forum is being held in Africa, we are celebrating that e-commerce is growing, that the digital economy is growing globally. In fact, even some are saying Africa is doing very well. But where are you starting? As a young company and a startup operating on the continent of Africa, one of the main barriers that we um, are experiencing is inter African trade. So the digital economy is 25 years old in the West, it's six years old in Africa. I have always seen Africa as a continent of entrepreneurs. It is now going uh, through its own digital revolution that is reshaping uh, the continent. 50% of all the digital economy of Africa is owned by Kenya, South Africa and Nigeria. How does the world help Africa to get on board? Ankit has asked us one very simple question. Uh, they have uh, put uh, on the market, rapid e-trade readiness reviews. What do we do after these reviews are done? And how can each one of us contribute to taking these reviews forward? How do we get women empowered? When you're talking to people about t connectivity, they're talking to you about Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's not a social media thing, it's an economic livelihood issue. We need African women to make money. You can be a doctor, but are you married? And how many children do you have? As if that is the measure of a woman's life. The internet democratizes data and information. So how would you utilize existing platforms now, the fact that we have these resources on the internet gives us an opportunity to be able to get included somehow. So, start small, start together, uh, exchange the good practices and the good experience, and try to help to, to, to add uh, step by step new partners. We'll have more conversations, we'll have more connections, we'll have more engagement because of this exposure. Many people talk about the fourth industrial revolution, but in reality, we are living the first digital revolution. One day you can say, I was there, I was part of it. Thank you so much, Jonathan, team, and Jonathan, this is great. So now this session will hear brief reports from the main track sessions of the week. But before I go there, 
you know, I just want to let you know there's translation to French. So you have to juggle with your equipment there. You have to first go to menu, menu and, then and then to audio. And then delegate A or B. <laughs> then you have to select whether you delegate A or B, depending on your seat, and then you pick the language. So that's, I think many of you know, but if you don't know, this is just go through your menu and then you will hear all. So let me now start the main track sessions of the week, and we are going to get the, uh, the main recommendations of the track sessions. So we have the e-commerce the e strategies, assessments. Cecil, you have the floor. Thank you, Shamika, and well done for the video indeed. So I'm happy to report on the session on e-commerce readiness assessment and strategy formulation. There are seven main key recommendations that were made. Uh, first, uh, realizing that in many African countries work on e-commerce spans different ministry, there is a need to secure effective inter-ministerial coordination. The second one is uh, the need to develop national e-commerce strategies as having a dedicated e-commerce strategy can really help create a unifying wall of government approach and provide a common set of policy objectives. The third one is there's a need to adopt strategies to strengthen domestic and regional digital infrastructure and capabilities, and those strategies can help, indeed, enable the development of local and regional platforms to support local products and businesses. The, four point, the fourth point is uh, addressing the need to strengthen the policy dialogue with relevant stakeholders, including private sectors as well as consumers. Uh, the fifth point is realizing that the private sector views on e-commerce are usually fragmented. There is a need to foster private sector coordination. With this voice unified, we can provide better advices to government on how to create the enabling environment for the productive investment and innovation in the digital economy. The fifth is... Uh, uh, we, we recognize that more should be done to ensure that women entrepreneurs equally enjoy the benefits from e-commerce. So government needs to address this gender gap in entrepreneurship. The seventh one is the last one, is the need to boost donor funding in support of African countries seeking to participate fully in the evolving digital economies. The session was very well attended. We had four heads of agencies, some of them were featured here. And uh, as a result, I uh, will just specify that we have received a, a number of e-commerce strategy requests plus e-trade readiness requests. So a lot of work for development partners here. I thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I hope UNCTAD staff and also our e-trade e -trade for all partners heard the new request that's coming your way. So let me now move to the ICT infrastructure session. Marcellino. Thank you very much. All right, the section was on expanding access to affordable and reliable ICT infrastructure services. We had uh, the deputy director, or deputy SG of ITU moderating, and we had people from ITU, European Commission, World Bank, Africa Development Bank, University of Cape Town, ISOC, and private sector in the panel. These people talk about the status of the networks in Africa, the gaps, the funding mechanisms, the experience of private sector, and specifically community-based networks. And the conclusion is, and possible solutions, that Africa are actually reasonably connected when it comes to international fiber optics, when it comes to connection from the landing point to the capital cities and big major cities. The gap is when you go deep into the countries. Even regional networks connecting countries within Africa are also considered reasonable, except for the central part of Africa that is a big, big, dark area there. So the challenge of providing affordable access of ICTs to the rural or remote communities is what should be addressed more carefully by governments, because in reality that's where 60% of the population lives. If you talk about market, that's where the opportunity is, despite of low income of those people. So the first proposal is public and private partnerships must be taken in consideration if the private sector has to get better return of investment for the investment. Some incentives for governments are also necessary, like using universal service funds 
that uh, in some countries are underutilized, uh, taxation policies, grants, and policies to encourage startups. Rural connectivity also, it's another conclusion, is more a business model problem, more than a technology problem. So the right business model can address that particular market. And one thing to address those markets is promote infrastructure sharing, not only within the sector, but across the sector. And it came straight away that the power utilities and telecom utility plants must be integrated. They move together to the rural areas if they have to both address the rural area needs. Digital literacy came always over and over again, uh, providing the e-learning to rural schools could be another way of generating demand because by addressing this, the rural community can create the demand that justifies the connectivity. This is, in summary, the conclusion of our session. Thank you. Thank you, Marcelino. So let me now move to trade logistics uh, session. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Seven recommendations for trade logistics. Uh, trade logistics meaning transport and trade facilitation. Number one, strengthen systems to physically locate and reach individuals and businesses. Physical addressing systems remain underdeveloped in many African countries, particularly outside urban areas. So we need to improve road infrastructure, forward-looking postal service strategies, and generally develop the capacity of national postal services and private sector couriers. Number two, it's on customs clearance. Cumbersome cross-border procedures are an obstacle for the growth of e-commerce. Clearance of the growing volume of small parcels poses new challenges to customs and other border agencies. Keywords here are customs automation, digitalization, and single window systems. Number three is on the capacity development and professionalization of the logistics sector. Providers of logistics services, including the post, couriers, freight forwarders, need to invest in human institutional and technological capacity building. Number four is on the continuous monitoring and simplification of procedures. Here a catchphrase could be the technological progress will never be as slow as today. We do not yet know what technologies will be relevant in the future, so we really need to continuously monitor and review and update the procedures. For this, countries need strong national trade facilitation committees that are empowered to monitor e-commerce processes to detect potentials for improvement and foster further simplification and transparency. Trade information portals can be a useful tool in this context. Point number five, regional integration. Many trade facilitation measures require collaboration among neighboring countries in order to promote the consolidation of e-commerce shipments and the use of land rather than air transport for e-commerce within Africa and African RECs, we need ambitious regional trade facilitation programs. We had a very successful ministerial trade facilitation retreat here for the, uh, with the East African community yesterday with some very tangible outcomes in this direction. Number six, uh, e-commerce delivery solutions. Private enterprises in Africa are beginning to develop innovative package delivery solutions, including in rural areas. Governments have an important role to play in supporting new solutions across the packaging, shipping, delivery chain of e-commerce, and regulation in this context needs to be quite flexible. Seven, last but not least, we need to facilitate the integration of logistics services and trade. During the sessions we had linked to trade logistics, again and again, other related topics came up. So, in conclusion, postal services, express carriers, freight forwarders, they play a fundamental role towards the integration of cross-border physical deliveries with the customs procedures and also payments of duties and taxes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jan. Let us hear from Cecil on the legal and regulatory framework session. Cecil. Thank you, Shamika. Well, as we all well know by now, security and trust are fundamental to e-commerce uh, because they reassure both consumers and businesses. So it is essential for countries to, one, uh, create a baseline legislation or at least update what regulation and legislation exist and make sure that enforcement mechanisms are in place. Those should be based on international best practices 
and integrate provisions regarding cross-border e-commerce. The second recommendation that came out is that we need to build the capacity of the lawmakers and the judiciary. Uh, this will help government formulate informed policies and laws in the area of e-commerce and strengthen enforcement uh, such, of such laws. Um, the third recommendation that came out is we need to involve the private sector and NGOs in the consultation as multi-stakeholder consultation would help policymakers identify current regulatory constraints faced by the private sector as well as concerned uh, voiced by the civil society. The fourth recommendation uh, concerned the, the need to raise public awareness on existing legal framework and to sensitize consumers and businesses to create this confidence which is much needed. Uh, the fifth recommendation relates to the development tax policies that needs to be adapted to the digital economy and government should in that respect endeavor to strike a balance between ease of collection and fairness and to be neutral with regard to different sectors of the economy. Finally, the sixth and uh, sixth recommendation and final recommendation is to recognize that cloud computing and digital platforms represent key infrastructure for the digital economy and therefore institutional framework should be created to facilitate the adoption of cloud computing and the development of digital platform. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we go to skills development. Alistair, you have the floor. Thank you very much indeed. On the skills um, platform, which was uh, discussed and uh, moderated by James Howe of the International Trade uh, Center, uh, with a lot of people uh, taking part. Firstly, we recognized that the lack of skills lead to not only business failures, but erosion of trust um, for buyers and therefore trust in e-commerce. And that skills and training necessary, are necessary for all e-commerce e players, B2B as well as B2C, and also government to business, government to consumers. These are the players. Calls for action, we had five. Develop appropriate strategies to uh, encourage skills and conduct a mapping of requirements with identification of gaps. Secondly, to support business activities adapted to the needs of Africa. Thirdly, adapt training on core management disciplines in tertiary education as well as everything else, in tertiary education and technical colleges, as well obviously as universities and um, other. And special priorities, uh, firstly on training for cashless transactions, it was felt that people didn't know that much about them, and secondly, uh, which is um, been mentioned before to try to encourage and upskill women uh, and girls. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. So I now turn to Tobian for financing digital entrepreneurship session and its recommendations. Thank you, Shamika. And this is uh, the second area of the e-trade for all policy areas that we always look at in the e-commerce weeks. Uh, and here it was um, a consensus that a robust financial architecture that funds innovation and entrepreneurship at all points across the e-commerce and digital economy value chain is important. And this requires access to adequate solutions for affordable financing. It's also con noted that most African countries lack reliable financial services or early of early stage capital debt to startups and growth oriented businesses in the e-commerce ecosystems. And the recommendations that emerged uh, were five altogether. The first is to develop tailored lending standards and products that reflect the realities in each country, especially for micro and small businesses. Uh, secondly, provide financial literacy and business training. I hear the question of skills is emerging in many areas, and it's really fundamental. Uh, thirdly, to increase awareness of the role of incubators, business accelerators, and venture capital um, 
and uh, it uh, was encouraged that entrepreneurs and MSMEs need to look beyond banks and financial institutions for capital, especially at the early stages of their development, as the banks are reluctant to uh, fund uh, businesses at this level. Uh, fourthly, increase financial inclusion, including for youth and women. And fifthly, create dedicated funds aimed at providing financial support to innovative MSMEs, including capital investment grants, to help entrepreneurs secure finance for commercialization of products. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now we go to the cross two cross-cutting issues under our pillars for E-Trade for All, empowering women. Sabrina. Yes, thank you, Sharmika. So five recommendations from our e-commerce and women empowerment session. First, there is a need to change the current narrative. Give attention to bringing more value through women empowerment in Africa by thinking bigger and helping women to thrive beyond, beyond the informal sector, beyond the rural areas, beyond the micro-loans initiatives, and beyond subsistence level. Policy recommendation number two, go beyond the financial and technical support provided currently to bridge the personal development gap. More mentoring, more networking, and more exposure to relevant role model are needed. Three, leverage the new network of women leaders in e-commerce in Africa. It is important that the women leaders get more visibility as role models and more opportunities to influence policy debates and national and international levels. Four, bridge the data gap by using more relevant statistical frameworks. More accurate assessment of the challenges is important to make informed policies and accurately monitor progress in the field of women in digital and economic empowerment. Four, oh sorry, five, promote affirmative action. This should aim at increasing gender inclusivity and give more women a seat at the table when decisions are made by businesses and policy makers. And lastly, promote dialogue between policy makers, private sector and civil society for real progress on how to empower women in the digital economy. Thank you very much, Sabrina. So let's go to the last but not the least. Measuring e-commerce and the digital economy to Chris, because, I mean, if you don't know the size of the digital economy, we simply cannot even fathom what policies need to be there. Chris, you have. Thank you. So we've talked a lot about uh, the rapid changes that are occurring as a result of the digital economy and the ways that these changes can be managed to maximize the benefits and to minimize the risks. In Africa, while there is a rapidly growing digital economy and it's at the forefront of some technologies such as mobile money, the availability of statistics with which future policy making can be informed is very low. And indeed, it's the poorest countries that are the ones that tend to have the least data for informing these policies. A, a conspicuous gap exists in the measurement of the amount of e-commerce that is taking place. The session on measuring the um, digital economy came up with the following recommendations. Firstly, that the international community should invest more resources into supporting African countries in their efforts to, to measure the digital economy. The collection of statistics is much cheaper than investment in, in infrastructure, and the needs of African countries should be matched by capacity building by international organizations and, from, and funding from donors. This support needs to be sustained and long-term to avoid such initiatives simply resulting in one-off projects that are not repeated. Secondly, international frameworks for measuring the digital economy should be developed. International organizations with expertise in this area should develop and agree common international definitions, concepts, and methodologies for the statistical measurement of e-commerce and the digital economy to allow these countries to measure these phenomena and to do so in a way that is consistent and comparable between countries. At the national level, number three, government ministries and statistical officers should work in partnership to ensure that the statistics that are collected within a country are the ones that are needed to support the planning and poly policy formation needs of that country. Fourthly, countries should explore 
opportunities presented by more diverse sources of data and tools that arise out of the digital economy, including engaging in dialogue with digital, digital service providers about the possibility of using their data to measure certain aspects of the digital economy. For example, using mobile money transactions as a source of data. Transparency and ethics in the way that users' data are used is of vital importance here. Finally, we nevertheless believe that con countries should still continue to invest in traditional sources of statistics, such as surveys and government administrative records, which are relatively straightforward to implement, can provide extra breakdowns of information, such as gender, and may have high coverage where a legal requirement exists to provide such data. Governments should especially endeavour to improve their business registers, which are the backbone of sound business statistics. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Let me now invite uh, interventions from the business sector, civil society and academia. I'm very happy to see there are more than 700 plus uh, business sector, civil so CSOs and academia have registered here and they had 20 plus sessions. So let's hear from them. Dylan Pia, the e-commerce forum, Africa. Thank you very much. Um, this session on Monday was the result of a concept uh, tabled at the beginning of the, the year and it uh, constituted the first uh, Pan-African Digital CEO uh, Summit. Um, and uh, this is around recognition uh, of a collaborative nar narrative and inclusive, inclusive narrative that needs to be created uh, across the continent, um, taking into account uh, national nuances, but certainly uh, driving regional and uh, pan-African um, golden threads, as we call them, across uh, the business sector. So it was agreed by the CEOs, and this was a, a session with over nine countries represented, over 22 um, individuals participating, and there was quite a bit of pre-work done before uh, the session. Uh, and the agreement was that this would help to inform national, regional, pan-African dialogue and provide a transfer of ideas and support in effectively promoting um, a sustainable approach to e-commerce and digital trade. The CEOs committed to a number of things, including supporting inclusive multilateralism uh, for the sustainable growth and development um, in e-commerce and the digital economy, and specifically working closely with governments, civil society, and the private sector to cooperate and collaborate. The outcome of this session is, in fact, um, recognition that the future is now, um, it is happening, we cannot avoid it, we cannot put our head in the sand, we have to engage with it. Uh, we have to ensure that Africa and African citizens are be benefiting uh, as much as possible, um, but we've got to recognize that we also in, live in a global uh, economy. So the outcome is a development of the digital CEO principle of the future outcome report for um, e-commerce and digital economy in Africa which uh, is being um, revised at the moment in the, in the fifth revision and will be launched uh, and uh, disseminated at the end of January, beginning of February. The other outcome then from that is uh, that we need to collaborate more. There's a call to join um, the private sector bodies that are in existence. One would be the e-commerce forum Africa, which of course I'm chair and to my right is the, the CEO of that organization. Uh, and we propose that anyone from a uh, private sector who is interested in participating, uh, ensuring that you have support from other CEOs around the continent in your national uh, dialogues uh, and want to look at in, in be becoming a participant in our digital uh, forum that was going to create real-time dissemination of information, please do come and, and reach out to Alistair. Um, we are engaged in creating this, this future for Africa together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Sise Kane, African Civil Society for the Information Society. Thank you, Madam Chair. If you allow me, I will speak in French. Madam La Presidente, uh, last... Thank you very much. C Civil Society for Africa was very honored to be able to participate in the Civil Society Forum and to have been one of the organizations 
that organized the forum. We would like to thank UNCTAD for having organized this Africa e-commerce week in Africa. We have started a series of deliberations at civil society level that we will submit amongst these recommendations. The first would be to encourage taking into account the issue of digital economy across the African continent to accelerate and guarantee the conditions that might facilitate e-commerce in Africa. That is access to information, the regulatory framework, the gender dimension, training, infrastructure, etc. To continue to have consultations on a regular level about e-commerce in Africa, on an annual basis, we have seen how much interest there was in this inter-African issue. And all of those who have good ideas, good proposals, so that things can move fast on the African continent, while making sure that everything is inclusive and bringing together all stakeholders are welcome at such meetings. Then there is the issue number four, to encourage local solutions, encouraging innovation. We have organized a competition for mobile e-commerce. My colleague, Lena, who was presiding over the panel, will present the results of that. But we believe al already that this has been a very interesting experience. It's allowed us to set up training. And we hope that there will be some incubation for those who have shown such precocious talent. We have not yet been able to carry out all of the sponsoring, and some of them have used their own money to come to Nairobi, and yet they're right at the beginning of their careers. Five, to assure proper interaction between the stakeholders and mutual confidence and trust. The concept of e-commerce has allowed us to have this exchange. We believe that this is the right way forward so that governments can work with civil society, the private sector, and also centers of research and innovation and the universities in order to come to solutions that take into account all of the relevant aspects. We'd also like to propose to encourage solutions on platforms and applications that favor local points, consumers using local languages, for example. And this falls well in line with the program of Zlekov, the CFTA, so that intra-African commerce and its needs can be taken into account so that we go beyond those who are trained, those who have languages outside French and English, those who just have French and English, those who have languages beyond the local languages. And we'd like to make sure that rural women are also trained so that we can include the gender dimension as we seek to find innovative solutions. We also propose that we ensure that e-commerce creates jobs locally and not just related to business itself. We'd like to encourage the participation of the consumers themselves, citizens of Africa. And finally, we call upon this meeting to support innovation, assisting us more assisting young developers for e-commerce more consistently. If you will allow, I'd like to pass the floor to Madame Lena Moitamoua, who is a former member of AXIS and who presided over the panel on African e-commerce mobile application awards. The prizes were awarded a few minutes ago, and she will give us a summary of the deliberations. The candidates, the recipients of these prizes are here in the room, and if, the, if there is enough time, it would be good if they could also take the floor briefly. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. While you are getting ready, let me give the floor to Martin Baye, Stratamore Business School, to represent the Academia Suisse.
Okay, can I then give the floor to Axis to announce the winner of the e-commerce mobile app competition? Uh, Martin, I come back to you. Okay, I think we should have started with a song. Feel the magic in the air. Ale, 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 le, ve, le, me, ale. Ale, ale, ale. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can party later on. Right. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nena. Thank you, President Sise, for giving me the opportunity. I'm speaking on behalf of Alun Badra Diallo, Amin Munir, Safia Youssef, Denis Ndalo, Mark and Fai, and Natalie Viel, who were co-members of the jury with me. It took two, two months, 50 projects and from 15 countries, and today we heard 13 themes who pitched. Um, different projects. Uh, we shortlisted nine, but the awards went to three projects. So I'm going to invite Taxi Boko, that won the third prize. Taxi Boko from <laughs> Senegal. Taxi Boko is a taxi sharing application that is geolocalized. Congratulations once again. I'm going to invite eConnect Agree, also from Senegal. eConnect Agree is an application that, that gives an electronic fare. So you come and you pitch a tent and you sell to people. And the number one, and I think I should do some song again. Feel the magic in the air. Ale, 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 le, ve, le, me, ale, 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 ale. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> and, the, and the first prize went to Aiwanga from Mauritania. Aiwanga is an e-marketing application that has voice, that has mobile, and has a web um, interface. And once again, congratulations, guys. Okay, so that's young. And I'm just jealous that there was no female winner, and I'm hoping that next year we'll give them a red eye. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank So Martin Bay, Strathamoa Business School. Martin, you are a university sure. professor. You have the last word. Uh, sure. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Shamika. Uh, in, in terms of academia, uh, we really articulated throughout the entire uh, sessions we were dedicated, but also all the other sessions we attended, an innovation systems approach. I'll unpack this in four questions. Uh, who, what, how, and why? Uh, so for the WHO, we think of universities like ourselves, Strathmore and our partnerships, and uh, incubators, accelerators, and hubs that are located in our institutions or affiliated with our institutions as part of an innovation ecosystem. Uh, in that sense, we engage locally, nationally, regionally, continentally, as well as globally. Uh, secondly, we are also a triple helix that brings together government, industry, and ourselves as academia in partnership with civil society. And thirdly, we are a consumer, an enabler, and a producer of e-commerce. Consumer in the sense of goods and services uh, that we use both in the private sector and public sector. Enablers in terms of the research we bring up and the advocacy we undertake. And producers in terms of digital learning. Uh, which is taking knowledge into the digital space, as well as production of startups, uh, companies that can engage in the future. Uh, so that's the who. In terms of the what, uh, we looked squarely at the theme. 
we thought of it as a challenge, empowering African economies in the digital era. Uh, five different speakers stood out. Mukisa Kitui, and I'll, I'll just underscore some of their statements. Uh, the Secretary General Lungtad mentioned there's a need to develop productive capacity as a support to e-commerce. He also noted that development partners should put resources into building e-commerce ecosystems in Africa. Uh, His Excellency President Uru Kenyatta, when he spoke, uh, touched on continental trade. He mentioned that the Africa continental free trade area needs digital technology to realize the objective of promoting inter-Africa trade by easing cross-border communication and payments. Uh, the executive director of ITC, Arancha Gonzalez, uh, made two, uh, actually one key point, and it played out in the video we watched earlier. Africa can contribute especially for true processes. Uh, the African continental free trade area, given its adaptability to cross-border trade and the world trade round where Africa has an opportunity to make rules of being a take, instead of being a taker. Uh, Elsie Kanza of the World Economic Forum uh, touched on this idea that focusing on the excluded is key. And then finally, Andros uh, with the U- European uh, Commission, uh, the Vice President, uh, mentioned that the impact on reducing corruption and strengthening uh, social economic fabric is key. And he also pointed out that the 28 member countries of the EU can offer a useful experience in creating a single digital market for Africa with a focus on small, medium enterprises. So having touched on the who and having touched on the what, uh, I'll speak to the how. So this could be thought of as recommendations or suggestions in the context of academia. And that's really uh, academic institutions and hubs and uh, various actors, accelerators, using a cluster approach and positioning themselves as a node that impacts the community they exist in within a five kilometer radius, where they are physically located, where their partners are located, et cetera. And I'll highlight uh, about uh, eight, eight, eight or nine different recommendations. Number one is some supporting the implementation of the Africa continental free trade area through capacity building, both for policymakers and for entrepreneurs. Uh, Secondly, is facilitating relationships among actors in the ecosystem. So where you have hubs, universities, et cetera, et cetera, can those come together and can they also partner with various actors? In uh, just a session before this, we heard from the World Bank about investments they've made with us at Strathmore, both in our uh, uh, tech uh, incubator, IBIS and uh, iLab, as well as in the climate tech climate change uh, space uh, in terms of SDGs, our uh, uh, Climate Innovation Center. Thirdly, establishing centers of excellence that capture research findings and disseminate those findings through data centers. That was underscored by our dean on Monday. Uh, fourthly, connecting e-commerce platforms of the regional economic communities. So we have Comesa, EAC, SADAC in terms of the tripartite free trade area. It would be nice if those various platforms are connected and academia is plugged into those. Uh, Fifthly, facilitate innovations in cross-border payments and trade. Uh, I think that has been touched on several times. Sixth, ensure solutions always take into account micro, small, medium enterprises, youth and women. Uh, The president of Kenya, when he spoke, underscored SMEs uh, quite strongly and uh, quite recently in October had visited us at Strathmore and underscored this quite strongly. It plays out across the continent. Uh, Next, embrace homegrown solutions. In one of the panels, uh, somebody highlighted something in Kenya we called CHAMAs. These are community cooperative movements. So are there ways we can think of financing of uh, enterprises through these local homegrown solutions? Then government should harmonize policies to promote e-learning and pilot through pioneers. We find that digital learning is quite constrained uh, because of rules and how who can get a degree, etc. So it would be nice if uh, there are ways that is uh, uh, made easier for institutions that want to experiment. And then finally, uh, spotlighting innovators and entrepreneurs uh, through fora like this. So it was really nice. Uh, the session we just had immediately before this, spotlight some entrepreneurs. We had the same happen yesterday where we showcased some of our entrepreneurs at Strathmore and all around people have been given a chance to pitch. Uh, So finally on the why, uh, for us as an institution, I think for academia in general, 
we think of the SDGs as a rallying call, and it's a good point for me to conclude uh, by picking four SDGs. Number one, no poverty, leaving no one behind. Number four, education. Number 16, institutions and uh, human rights. And most important of all, uh, number 17, partnerships. And we really thank UNCTAD for this opportunity. I think we've benefited quite a bit. And as academia, bringing on our partners, we are keen to work together to move this entire agenda forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give a hand to all the presenters for presenting very insightful and pragmatic recommendations. Thank you. So I'm pleased to inform you that we will now circulate it, the document that compiles all the recommendations will be circulated to you in the Path Able software that we have used for the Africa e-commerce week. I think you all have it on your, uh, on your smartphone. And uh, the document, uh, you will just receive it. It is called Nairobi Manifesto on the Digital Economy and Inclusive Development in Africa. So all what you said here is already recorded. So now with this, now we begin the final phase of our e-commerce week. I would now like to turn to the closing statements by the organizers of the Africa e-commerce week. Let me invite the African Union Commission been our key partner in this endeavor, Mr. Christian Minungu, Department of Infrastructure and Energy. Christian, you have the floor. Madam Chair, I don't have much to say this afternoon. Uh, I would like to say just a few words in French. Hello, Madam, uh... Madam Chair, I would like to, on behalf of the African Union Commission, convey our gratitude to you for having associated the EU, or rather the AU Commission, in this very important event. I would like to especially convey my gratitude to the government of the Republic of Kenya for having made it possible for us to meet here, gather together in this beautiful city of Nairobi to discuss a question of such importance, namely e-commerce. Especially in light of the potential it affords the continent in terms of support and development of other socioeconomic sectors, in terms of the creation of jobs, for our girls and boys, and in development, full stop. I have witnessed substantial mobilization here. Committed participants, and I believe that the energy of all those here present bear witness to everyone's unstinting commitment in working towards the full-fledged development of e-commerce throughout our continent. There are challenges. And young entrepreneurs who have spoken up here, often with a great deal of verve and vigor, expressed their yearning to enjoy a conducive environment one which would enable them to express themselves. They want conducive policies. They wish to see access to financing. They wish to see development of their own capacities. And I believe that if we all were to pool our efforts, we will be able to afford these young people what they require what they require to enable our continent to move forward. And all of us know that Africa has a unique opportunity, that of enjoying a young, very young population. I would also like to reassure you that the AU Commission will play its part in this exercise. Initiatives are currently underway alongside our traditional partners, 
such as, for example, the UN Economic Commission for Africa, the, Af the European Union, the World Bank, and I'll leave it there. And this should enable us to very rapidly to make available to our member states and to our continent strategies. Strategies both in terms of the development of e-commerce as well as a strategy to on, on digital identity. And I believe that this will serve as a good foundation on which we can build to progress e-commerce and to develop the digital economy throughout our continent. I'd also like to reassure you that concerning the challenge facing us, other initiatives such as the development of payment platforms are currently being discussed. And I believe that the AU Commission should be in a position to also come up with proposals which will, it will submit for your consideration. I know that during the second week of the month of January, we will have what we refer to as the meeting of the Specialized Technical Committee on Trade and Industry. Some of the questions which we have discussed here will, I am sure, be discussed there to ensure that the recommendations, the resulting recommendations, be submitted for the consideration of the highest political levels, the political decision makers at the level of the African Union. Madam Chair, it would be remiss of me to go on without congratulating all present here for they sustained contribution and efforts over these last five days, and I wish you all a safe trip back home. Merci beaucoup. So let me now invite Stephen Karengi, Director of the Regional Integration and Trade Division of UNECA, Economic Commission for Africa, our sister agency. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Chair, uh, all protocols are uh, observed. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it has been uh, a great pleasure for the ECA to participate in this dedicated e-commerce week for Africa and would like to start by thanking ANCTAD, AU, EU, Government of Kenya for giving us the opportunity to be part of this process. The Economic Commission for Africa and its African Trade Policy Center has been following the various discussions and contributed to the ongoing debates spanning across a wide range of issues at the heart of digitalization in the continent. We take note of the work by ANCTAD on e-trade readiness in seven African countries as well as those that are underway the digital economy holds an opportunity and a promise for our continent, Africa, which cannot be unlocked unless we understand what binding constraints impede the realization of e-commerce. A major binding constraint in Africa today is having access to digital identity. In this regard, the Economic Commission for Africa is in the process of undertaking scoping missions in several countries to address the, the readiness for digital ID. Solid digital ID foundations are required to ensure that individuals can in fact take advantage of the opportunities of digitalization, which include e-commerce among others. As the Executive Secretary of the ECA, uh, Ms. Vera Songwe, showcased earlier this week, the ECA is working very closely with the African Union on an initiative for digital ID for Africa. It is our belief that this will support the continent in harnessing the benefits of digitalization. We are exploring the broadening of partnerships in this regard and indeed would also welcome greater collaboration with ANCTAD. 
We also note from the discussions of this week that the digital economy holds much promise for greater equity and inclusion. However, the challenges of e-commerce are many and complex, some of which need multifaceted policy interventions. The interplay between employment policy, trade policy and fiscal policy, but also infrastructure policy have an important role to play in closing the digital divide for Africans. Therefore, more analytical work needs to be conducted on these fronts to understand what is required to enhance the participation of Africans in the digital economy. It is here where institutions such as ANCTAD and ECA need to work more closely together to bridge the knowledge gap to support policy making in the continent. Lastly, we at ECA see great opportunities for digitalization as a regional public good in the context of regional integration efforts. Many African countries share concerns about data, data privacy, and data security. This, again, is a foundational issue when it comes to dig digitalization. Robust solutions must, must be devised and some may require concerted efforts. For example, interoperability across trading platforms and electronic payment systems is a prerequisite if we wish to see electronic trade happening between Africans. If countries establish identity systems within a common end standard framework, interoperability can be achieved. Subsequently, the risks and challenges associated with weak system foundations, as well as the absence or poor legislation can be addressed if common standards are adopted. Against this backdrop of these shared concerns and objectives, well-designed platforms can be a critical enabler of the African continental free trade area and the digital trade that may ensue within the continent. A continental approach would help foster improvement and harmonization and this requires good foundational principles which also cater for privacy and security. Let us work together on advocating for stronger frameworks for digitalization in Africa at the continental level. I wish to take this opportunity to thank you all for your kind attention and hope to continue working with you even as we advance the agenda of digitalization in our continent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me now invite Alessandro Tonoli, Trade Advisor of the EU Delegation to Kenya and our partner in this endeavor. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we are very proud to have been among the co-organizer of the well, first uh, Africa e-commerce week. Thanks. Um, uh, together, of course, with, uh, with, our, uh, with our partners. Uh, uh, we really think, uh, also having seen uh, uh, the work in a number of, uh, of panels across the week, uh, that uh, this type of event <coughs> sorry, will really help uh, to raise awareness about some of the main uh, uh, key policy issues that governments really need to address uh, um, to improve the readiness of Africa to take the most of uh, uh, digital economy. As to our uh, contribution, uh, um, I think that uh, it's very important for us that uh, uh, it has been used to bring together uh, government representatives, uh, uh, business leaders, uh, um, civil society organization representatives, because we really think that uh, on this topic, to, on e-commerce, uh, to um, uh, um, an essential dialogue between uh, uh, stakeholders uh, is absolutely key if we want to achieve any, uh, any meaningful uh, uh, result. Um, one personal uh, remark, uh, I uh, took part to uh, one of the panel in the program, the panel on women and uh, uh, e-commerce, and uh, I think it's been the most exciting panel I have ever been on. So thanks really to my co-panelists, the moderator, and, uh, and all the participants. 
uh, really being very short. Uh, um, thank you all uh, for, for the participation to the the e-commerce uh, week, uh, those who took part in panels, those who have come from uh, uh, many countries uh, all over uh, Africa, and be reassured that uh, the European Union will continue uh, to work with our partners uh, uh, to ensure that uh, all the opportunities of uh, uh, the digital economy of e-commerce uh, are not missed and that uh, uh, young countries uh, uh, can uh, make uh, the most uh, out of this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me now invite His Excellency Ambassador Mustafa Osman Ismail El Amin, permanent representative of Sudan to the UN in Geneva and chairman of the African Group. <laughs> uh, Madam uh, Chair, uh, Madam Durant, Deputy Secretary General of UNCTAD, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. As the coordinator of the African Group of Ambassadors in Geneva to UNCTAD, it gives me a great honor to address the closing session of the African E-Commerce Week. Let me first congratulate UNCTAD and its partner, African Union, ECA, and the European Union on this very Success African E-Commerce Week. Let me also pay special tribute to the host country, Kenya, for the warm welcome and the generous hospitality in this very beautiful city of Nairobi. We are so pleased that under the theme Empowering African Economies in the Digital Era, the African Commerce Week discuss ways to enhance the ability of African countries to engage in and benefit from e-commerce and the evolving digital economy. The week brought together ministers, other senior governmental government representatives, the private sector, civil society, and international organization. The event was a very good platform that allowed multi-stakeholders dialogue at the national and sub-regional level. Africa, like other regions, is at a critical juncture where digital technologies can assist in its structural transformation. But compared to other regions, Africa is more challenged and therefore deserve special attention if the global economy aims to deliver on its Agenda 2063 and the SDGs 2030. Many of the African countries are still struggling with their ICT infrastructure in terms of accessibility and affordability. There are 20 African countries with internet penetration rate less than 10%, and 15 countries with internet penetration rate between 10% and 20%. This implies that a bulk of the African population does not have access to internet while majority of the African firm missing out on the opportunities provided by the digital revolution, lack of internet, of internet access does not in any way protect them from the accompanied challenges. The use of digital economies like big data analytics, artificial intelligence, and e-commerce platform by others implies that this firm will lose their existing trade competitiveness, both in the global economy as well as in domestic economy. Competitors will have more accurate information about their consumers, and consumers will be drawn towards cheaper and more varied goods sold through e-commerce platform. This shows that, to some extent, Africa needs more attention. Let us keep the momentum and further continue this discussion in Geneva and other related fora to advance the continental agenda, including the operationalization of African continental free trade area. Finally, our thanks and gratitude to UNCTAD staff for 
excellent work and communications during this, this uh, uh, e-commerce week. I thank all of you and wish safe trip for those traveling back home. And finally, thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, I would like to now invite uh, Mr. Peter Nioroge, Ministry of uh, Industry, Trade and Cooperation, our amazing host, Kenya, to give us the final remark. Good afternoon, all. The Deputy Secretary General Untad, Mrs. Isabella Durant, representative of the European Union, Mr. Alessandro Tonori, members of Diplomatic Corps, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am pleased to be here with you this afternoon during this closing session of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, Africa Regional Economic uh, Commerce Week. As indicated by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya during the opening session, this forum has indeed been a major milestone event, particularly for Kenya, since it's the first time it's being held in Africa. We are happy that uh, UNTAD accepted the Kenya's request to host this conference, and as a country, we are indeed very grateful for UNTAD top leadership making uh, this event uh, possible, particularly here in Kenya. The forum has been quite informative and a lot of ideas and experiences on e-commerce and digital economy have been shared. I believe those of us from Africa have acquired some knowledge and useful ideas that will help us shape policy environment on e-commerce and digital economy as we move forward. During this conference, the role of digital technology as a catalyst to integrate medium, small, and micro enterprises into global economy has been demonstrated. It is important that this technology is harnessed to help the, the medium, uh, medium, uh, medium, small, and uh, uh, to micro, small, and medium enterprises make meaningful contribution to employment and income generation in Africa. Equally, Digital economy has shown us how to improve financial inclusivity in our economies. The adoption of mobile transfer, mobile money transfer, and other financial services by use of mobile phone technology has led to innovation in traditional banking industry, especially here in Kenya. These are seen banking services being reshaped to improve inclusiveness by use of digital technology. Although this has led to some job losses, we believe that other sectors will emerge that can provide employment opportunities for employees displaced by technology and innovations. Ladies and gentlemen, Untad has shared a lot of outcome of his assessment of e-readiness of some countries in Africa. These studies provide useful ideas on critical policy intervention areas that are necessary to improve Africa's e-commerce readiness. They also point to the need to, for appropriate skills, development, and curriculum focus that can give us the critical skills required for the digital economy. I therefore urge all, all our colleagues from around the continent to utilize the outcome of these UNTAD studies to develop their own solutions that work for their respective countries while embracing the continental economic integration agenda. Gender inclusivity has also emerged as a critical issue that needs to be prioritized and uh, be, remain a key focus area of e-commerce and digital economy policy. Every effort sh efforts should therefore be made to ensure that women and youth are not left out in the digital economy. During this week, the East Africa community has committed to deepen its integration agenda by implementing WTO trade facilitation measures both at the national and regional level and in line with the aspiration set by African continental free trade area. 
as the most integrated regional integration uh, uh, region, uh, con uh, block, trading block in the continent, ESC could provide some useful lessons to other regional economic communities that can contribute to continental economic integration. As a host, we have found this conference constructive and useful. I therefore wish to thank UNTAD, the European Union, the E-Trade for All initiatives for the partnership that has made this conference a success. We look forward to this continued partnership in the future as we move to shape the era of e-commerce and digital economy. I also wish to thank all the resource persons for their facilitation and all the delegates for accepting to come and be part of this uh, particular forum. I also want to thank United Nations Office, Nairobi, for good facilities that were made available for our use. As I conclude, therefore, I wish, I wish all of you, as you go back to your respective uh, countries, the journey, very good journey, masses, and, uh, and uh, in your respective countries, bon voyage. Thank you so much for your attention, and God bless you, Asenteni. Thank you very much. Let me now invite our Deputy Secretary General, Isabel Durand, to give us the closing remarks. DST, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I will start in French, continue in English, and finish shortly in Swahili. <laughs> shortly. So, first of all, Excellencies. Excellencies, very dear participants in this first Africa e-commerce week, dear friends, dear colleagues, I am extremely impressed by the results that we have achieved over just five days. I believe that this has been significant and will provide great capital for all of us that we can then use in our respective areas of control. First of all, you, partners, governments, to move forward in the right way by being in sync with what the private sector and the civil society have put forward, but also by producing the regulatory framework that's rigorous and yet flexible and dynamic that responds to the aspirations of the private sector, but rigorous in order to protect the fundamental rights of your citizens and consumers, you partners from the private sector, to take advantage of the full possibilities of the digital sphere by also bearing in mind the SDGs for Africa and the social responsibilities of your companies, which should go hand in hand with the choices of your activities, as was and the SDGs, as was recalled as well by Mr. Mbaya. You, the partners at the institutions, European and African, so that we can construct together the next step for the setting up of the networks, dialogue, exchange, it, with this beautiful region in, of Africa in both French and English as we've been able to do so much during this week and you partners from civil society, local members to work closely with citizens and consumers, to work with young entrepreneurs of both sexes in order to work alongside with them, to include them and to make them players as we move forward in this dynamic phase of e-commerce. By organizing this, we decided to look at the positive side of the story while recognizing lucidly the risks of the digital world, but by agreeing to address them, let's remain mobilized so that we can be motivated by the famous baggage that we have learned about. Thanking uh, one more, one more time, our precious donors, the European Union, the government of Kenya, Germany, a big thank for your generosity and support. And a big thank also to, uh, to UNON for the excellent support that we receive in the organization of this, uh, this week. Let me conclude by saying that none of this would have been possible without the incredible energy, commitment, and hard work of the whole UNCTAD team, led by Shemika, Torbjorn, and Sabrina, 
they deserve a round of applause, please. <laughs> Let me also thank our fantastic E-Trade for All partners, our young Kenyan volunteers, and UNCTAD e-founders for their active participation. We are approaching the festive season, and so I hope we will all take a New Year's resolution that serves Africa's development through the best tools designed this week. Asante kwam shango wako bora, akuna matata. Thank you very much, DSG. I think with that. Can I close the Africa e-commerce week now, or you have the music coming? It was an important <laughs> message. <laughs> okay, there's a very important message. Team. So let me announce the Africa e-commerce week is now concluded. Wish you all safe travel home and we look forward to keeping in touch. Thank you. 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 Thank you.